Our first presenter is um, Graham Bow. Um, the, uh, when we're talking with the presenters um, who are presenting these projects, one of the things we asked them was to talk to, the, to you as the audience in terms of, is this a project that's about ready to go? Is it something that's about 18 months away? Or is it more like a five year um, timeline? So that people who are interested in getting involved have a, some sense of where the project is up to. With Graham, his passion is water. He's been working with a group um, around, and he'll be uh, talking to you around what are the, some of the possibilities. Graham's a retired business executive, uh, very active in the community. He has an MBA and a number of other professional and business qualifications. His passion is water and what can be done. And again, it's thinking differently about how we can approach some of the challenges on this. A lot of the information that um, his group has been working on has come from the Office for Water, some of the council staff and records, and also the anti-mine group working on water. The big picture model has been developed by various researchers, but it's also had input worldwide uh, from places like Delft University in the Netherlands, um, a, German's, a German water provider, uh, and also the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So I'd like to invite Graham, um, where are you Graham, you're there, uh, to the podium. Thank you. Seems to be less people here now. It must be something I said or I'm about to say. <laughs> we started this water project. We thought this is going to be easy. We've got a competitive advantage on water, so we should be able to come up with something quickly. The first thing we did was we built a model of the weather and the water supply out to 2070. And as you'd expect with climate change, the rainfall reduces and evaporation increases, and there's obviously a range of predictions. Locally, one forecast includes an estimate of a slight increase in rainfall, while other forecasts forecasts a reduction. The forecast for stream flow into Warragamba is thought to reduce by around a quarter by 2030 and more as you go further out. And if that becomes true, Sydney Water will be accessing Winge Caribbean Reservoir, the Shoalhaven, turning on its own desal plant and running hefty water restrictions. Basically, we are required to have the same level of water restrictions as Sydney, so we think we don't have a competitive advantage. The model which we produced is too complex for the time I have available here, but shows on the maximum consensus case that all our water reserves are gone and we're relying on groundwater by 2030. Most locals point to our dam and say, well, what about that? Well, Sydney Catchment Authority owns it, but it's labelled as a reserve for Sydney. Our council's own water reserves is measured in days of use, not months or years. Now, on now you'll find that 2030 projection hard to believe. Hands up quickly who think we're wrong. OK, not many of you. But we thought we need to test it anyway. So our number one recommendation is that Council had a strategic water plan in 2009. It needs updating if some of its assumptions were wrong. A recommendation one is to divert some Council environmental funds to a new strategic water plan. To encourage this step, we'll present our findings and the model shortly to Council, to the Mayor, who's now gone, I think, and, and perhaps to the full Council later. And that study, of course, to do will take quite a few months. Press the right button, it works. So one of our projects is talking about the existing sewer discharge. 3,000 megalitres of water discharges from the barrel treatment works annually. This treated water could support many small producers and other local farmers. Of course, the water now runs into the Winch Caribbee Creek and thus on to Warragamba Dam. We may have to do some work with Sydney Catchment Authority to achieve any change to this. On timing and funding, the Shire sewer treatments are once again reading, reaching capacity, I'm told, and tens of millions of dollars will be required soon, and diverting a small amount of money to uh, achieve this upgrade will be possible. So is this a, a brand, a brand spanking new idea? No, we were down at a Shoalhaven River Parade the other day and they had their water truck in the parade. Yeah. 
our local farmers already suffer from high evaporation nine months of the year, and it's not going to reduce under climate change. There are a multitude of products that work on small farm dams, ranging from chemical barriers to floating discs and to plants like azolla. What we need is an education program and a communication program and perhaps the support of a state or Australian-wide farming body. Steps like this would make our shire much more sustainable. New houses now require water tanks, but existing water usage across the shire is anything but uniform. Council could, over time, require tanks on existing owned properties of, say, one to five acres, just for an example, whether tapped into grey water or not, and have those tanks, and then perhaps we could take that notion further over time. Now, many of these properties will not want a large and perhaps ugly tank in the context of what is a nice urban garden, which opens up the new jobs angle. Think specifically designed tanks that fit into your property without becoming an eyesore. Think about 3D printers and what they're capable of. How do we get this started? Well, once again, we believe Council has to come to grips with a new water plan, and this is a good implementation project over time. Here's another project. No, we're not suggesting a return to the night cart. The two biggest water users in the house are the washing machine and the toilet. Current Shire water demand is somewhere around four to five megalitres. Three of it comes out of the barrel sewer treatment plant. There are two main types of alternative toilet. There's the microwave one and the vacuum one. The microwave one uses no water and the zap waste can be safely used on the garden and may be much more cost effective than the vacuum one. The vacuum one has been instituted in half a dozen places in the world already, so it does work. A vacuum type, uh, uh, sorry, a microwave type uh, sewerage system could be trialled in a new subdivision. While this will create manufacturing and installation jobs, it will take quite some time to gain the approvals out of the many state level bodies that will have an interest. Think environment and the water and uh, well, the whole lot of those people will all have a whatever say. But if we do it, will it enhance our sustainability image? I think so. Not really having a shot at council, but <laughs> they have an objective. They have an objective on sustainability. It has a sustainability and environmental subcommittee, and when I read it last, and that's a few months ago, it had no real sustainability objectives. Other groups' recommendations coming at you today, whether user-friendly walk tracks or more small farm cohesion, could be grouped together under the heading of sustainability. We're not suggesting that council fund these but we need Council to provide the drive and coordination as steps towards implementing their own 2031 plan. The red dots on the screen are existing groundwater bores that have been registered and due to the high water extraction there's currently a moratorium on new bores. There is a feeling that many bores are not even registered and that many are classified as used for agriculture. There's a big cluster of boars in Burradu, and I don't know, but I haven't seen many cows there recently. The recent Kangaloon boar on the uh, part of the last Sydney drought initiatives was capped and held as a Sydney water reserve. The Sydney water report say that it can be pumped for three years full time before it would have to be turned off. So there's three years water supply for all of Sydney, apparently, in the groundwater underneath us. But if we don't have any water in the dam at 2030, that takes us out to 2033 and we don't have any water in the groundwater either. So we need to think about what we're doing. Now before you jump on me with two topics and questions, the first one I want to address is stormwater. It is an issue in Sydney and elsewhere as much runs straight into the sea. Generally speaking, our stormwater here finds its way to local rivers which flow into the Winch Caribbee Dam. The second question you'll want to ask me, well, what about a new dam? If it's not going to rain much, not much sense in a new dam. Thanks for listening. Any questions? Yeah, Graham. So, with the, because there's been a lot of talk about the stuff that the SCA did out on the, on the, on the, on the tourist road with the boards there, but when you look at that, board water in this area is a huge issue. Just look at the boards. Most of them would be a half mega day, two mega day boards. Under their licence, did you factor that information into your model? 
Uh, no, 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 we didn't. We didn't uh, factor that into our model. We looked at basically at above ground water in our model, and so what we're saying is, do we have enough water above ground? And what what we determined was, well, no, we don't. So the next option is bores, and we agree with you. There's lots of bores. There's lots of people who uh, probably are not even registered. There's lots of people 20 years ago when they put their bore in said, yes, it's for agriculture, when actually it's for water in the verge on the, on the side of the road. What we need to under, understand is actually, actually what are those used for, and we'll be needing to make a decision somewhere in the future about whether it's important to have a green verge or drinking water. So that should be part of Council's strategic water plan, yes? This audit? Uh, this, this was a separate audit I, that I was thinking of um, in that uh, I don't think the bores are controlled by council, they're co controlled by DPI, I think. Yeah, they, they are, but it'd be good for us to know in our plan because it may not be the answer for the future. That's what I'm getting at, like there's a lot of water there. Yeah, there, there is a lot of water there and, and what I'm trying to say is that we need to make sure we're using it the right way. One more question. Um, did you look at water and mining? Uh, no, we, we tried very, very, very hard to be neither pro-mine or anti-mine. <laughs> Why? Did. Well, we were, we were looking at water and we started by looking at above ground water and I think I've convinced you that there's going to be a problem with above ground water. You then get into below ground water. We have talked to the anti-mine people about our conclusions and they've shared a lot of data that they've got. Um, we thought, we're doing a water job, we'll let them do the anti-mine job. One more question. Uh, it's interesting what you said about uh, looking at means of uh, getting water and storing it. Is the geographical <coughs> feature of the Shire sufficient to get a dam in a position where you get a deep enough uh, storage of water. I haven't seen that. So. Uh, th there is the possibility, of course, to uh, say uh, deepen, enlarge, and widen uh, the current Winch Caribbean Dam. Um, lots of money, and uh, that's a problem for Sydney Water or the Sydney Catchment Authority because we don't own it, so we can't do it. But there's no possibility of the, the Shire outside Sydney's requirements getting its own dam, is there? Uh, no, you come back to rainwater flows, um, and then you come back to uh, the cost of trying to do those. You come back to the problems with uh, one of the council's existing water um, uh, catchments, which the curtilage is about 100 metres, which should be about one and a half kilometres, and consequently the water's dirty and, and is going to be, have to be turned off for a while out of our water system. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Graham.